Today we will discuss such terrifying things as damages to the energy field, although it's terrifying only for those who are uninformed on the matter, since all the unknown always seems scary to us, usually much scarier than it actually is. Thus, our practice today is a sort of a mental vaccine that we're going to administer to ourselves to develop certain levels of understanding and thereby get rid of non-constructive fears as a result. Once upon a time, when people had no knowledge on the structure of their consciousness, which consists of subtle bodies that function according to their own laws, any things associated with damage to the energy field was known as spoilages, curses, jinxes, entity attachments, which certainly sounded pretty creepy and terrifying. Regardless of whether a person was an ignorant peasant or a well-educated nobleman, these things were equally taboo to both. Why were they forbidden? Because the culture, the culture of this sort of knowledge, was no more. It was lost. With the coming of Christianity, needless to say, all of this, to a greater extent, had become overgrown with speculations and rumors, rather than posing an actual threat that everyone talks about. Nevertheless, as you know, there is no smoke without the fire, and if people say something, there is probably some truth to that. That is, the homespun truth, also known as the blunt truth or the plain truth. In any case, we will have to sort this issue out. We will theoretically go through all levels of our consciousness and find out where and what exactly is vulnerable to the things called energetic damages. We will discuss how to defend and protect ourselves against it, because in order to defend and protect ourselves, we need to know the cause, since there is always a reason. And from the very beginning, it is necessary to remember that nothing ever happens without a reason. And even if we don't see the cause, it doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't exist. So, in addition to discovering all that is needed in theory, we will also try to rationalize and understand how we can, being in our natural environment, being in our native habitat, defend ourselves from unauthorized, perhaps even harmful, influences on different subtle bodies. I do hope that our practice will lead you to a certain understanding of the essence and meaning, as well as the causes of such things as energetic damages revealing to you the mechanisms of its appearance, thus removing non-constructive fears, or maybe quite the opposite, providing you with a specific mechanism for confidence that you are, to a certain extent, protected from these kinds of influences. However, the basis, of course, lies in the knowledge, where we will actually begin from. As already mentioned, all types of energetic damages are ailments of subtle bodies. The vulnerability of the subtle bodies to such damages depends on the amount of energy and information present within them. If we observe the subtle bodies model according to the combination of energy and information, again, it will show us a lot. Let's look at the model. As you see, each subtle body has a different ratio of energy and information. Accordingly, damages that are more energy-based will fall on the more energy-based layers of subtle bodies. Whereas damages that are more information-based will fall on more informational subtle bodies. And this is a thing that we'll have to remember. We will remember that. And this concept, this maxima, will help us understand the very methodology for detection and diagnostics of certain processes. Processes.